Good morning. Okay, how do you, where do you want what and how? His name is Howard Jarvis. He's 75 years old, and he's the field marshal of a taxpayer's revolution. For years, Howard Jarvis has been preaching tax cuts, tax reform. But his gospel fell on deaf ears until property taxes in California started doubling and tripling. A million and a half people signed petitions to put Proposition 13, the Jarvis Amendment, on the June ballot. And now, Howard Jarvis and what he stands for has become the overriding issue of the election, affecting every office. Government is filled with moochers and loafers right up to their ears, and they have a great idea. Uh, the object of a lot of them is to get the job and sit there till they get a pension. And in the meantime, make, don't move in any direction. And if you, think I, if you think that isn't so, just go over there this morning to city council's office, and you walk through 15 city councilmen's office. You'll see more people asleep and reading Playboy than you, you do in, the, in, you know, in a hotel. The initiative that bears his name would limit property taxes to 1% of the assessed valuation and would cut revenues by $7 billion. The state legislature came up with a rival measure that would use a big state budget surplus to provide tax relief. Supporters of that plan say the Jarvis Amendment would go beyond cutting waste, would curtail vital health services, police and fire services, and slash education. He's following an exhausting schedule of personal radio and television appearances and is constantly debating the merits of the rival tax relief bills. It's a dialogue that will affect the way government does business all over the nation, not just California. This is going to be um, introduced pretty soon in Michigan, Oklahoma, uh, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania that I know about. I might say that I got, I got calls to the BBC. I might say that I got an invitation to go to Canada. They want to start it there. And um, the thing is, so, is, is it's just sweeping the country, and it's beyond my capacity to really uh, comprehend it, if you want to know the truth about it. California has long been considered a trendsetter, a birthplace of new ideas that go on to sweep the country. If the voters here decide to support a taxpayer's revolution, then Howard Jarvis is more than willing to take his crusade nationwide. This is Mike Botula reporting from Hollywood. You've got so many consumer protection agency in the state and city and county, uh, you know, that they're like a, a bunch of rabbits in a field. And they multiply about as fast, and they all go in a different direction. And the whole thing is a flow, it, it, you know, it's a whole flop. Uh, they know about as much about consumer protection as I do about swimming. <laughs> okay. I don't know why you're here either, but somebody will tell you. <laughs> Am I supposed to sit here, Mike? Sure. <laughs> Big. <clears throat> We're going to win it in a big margin. Any estimates? Yes, I do. I think we'll be 65% of the vote. Why did you call the city, Dave? Okay. Um, Howard Jarvis 
is one of the great men in this in this nation because he's uh, brought to light an issue taxes which everybody regardless of race color or creed has been concerned about because government today is taking approximately 45 percent of one's income and he's telling the people that they do have a voice that participatory democracy works when the people participate and through the initiative process we now have a, a ballot proposition which is going to limit property and allow people to retain their home be able to keep the places that they rent and so unlike the uh, the uh, advertisements that you hear on television that this is going to create shock waves for for uh, the economy this is really going to create a boom of prosperity for the people to be able to keep more of their earnings for themselves as a former college trustee when I was first elected in Los Angeles County in 1969 we called upon Howard Jarvis to come in and look at our budget and Howard was able to take out the fat and the waste and the duplication as lieutenant governor for the state of California during the first 100 days of my administration I'm going to appoint Howard Jarvis and Paul Gann to lead a Blue Ribbon Task Force to take the $18.2 billion state budget to again eliminate the waste, the duplication, and any fat that's in there because during the past four years of Brown Dimley, our state budget has increased 85 percent, the cost of living has been 29 percent, and the population growth has been 4.4 percent. And what we need are men of the caliber of Howard Jarvis, there who has no vested interest uh, ties but is there only to speak for the taxpayers to cut the fat and the red tape. And I'm also proud to have Howard Jarvis's endorsement for Lieutenant Governor, and I feel that we are going to bring about a renaissance in government, and that's through economy. In the past, uh, when the polls said that we had 25% and they had 23%, and uh, 41 percent were undecided. I knew that they were not undecided. Uh, I knew they had made up their mind, and uh, this poll, I think, was a little different. Uh, I generally think polls are pretty accurate on candidates, but I happen to know on this one, uh, they were about as far off as when, uh, I think it was a literary digest, predicted that Dewey was going to win the presidency. And uh, uh, I thought I was closer to anybody about it, but uh, I'd go over the state and every place I go, they can't get the people in the building, they can't get them in the field, they can't get them in the restaurant. And uh, when they got through, the chairman take a poll, we had 90%. And uh, I, I just knew that, uh, I just knew what it was, go what it was gonna happen. I thought we'd lose uh, some uh, support during the, the uh, campaign of the opposition, which they had a very heavy a television campaign. Fortunately, we're, we were we are able to match it, and so I think that we're not going to lose any. I think we'll go up about a point a day until the election, and I think we'll be at, at between sixty and sixty-five percent at the lowest. Mike, would just Jarvis and Gann be on your blue ribbon? I'm not going to give you a, a few specifics, but uh, there are so many. Uh, in the first place, that's not my job. I don't get paid to run the government. And uh, I'm sure that uh, if I were in the mayor's office or in the county supervisors that uh, we could probably do it in a couple of weeks because it doesn't take much brains to run government. Mr. Antonovich is going to ask you if he's elected to take part in this commission, which will have the task of right. finding ways to cut. Yeah. Where would you start? Well, the, you know, the whole committee is going to be meeting and they'll be analyzing right. and discussing. And I think what you have to have now is, is the budget. Now, the budget hasn't been passed yet. It will be passed at the end of this uh, an end of the month. Economic strife and, and uh, people losing their homes. Government cannot spend beyond their means. Otherwise, they're going to bankrupt every individual citizen in this nation's legislation. Senator Alquist has put in a bill to repeal it because it has not met the needs of the state. It was created to create an ex, uh, expediting, expediting the permit process so that we could locate nuclear energy. If you want to build a building or an apartment house or any kind of a building structure in the state of California, it takes you two years to get a permit. And the permit costs as much as the building. And uh, when the whole permit is issued, it uh, comes down for some fellow on the public payroll uh, telling a carpenter how to drive a nail. And if we had any brains at all, we'd cut all this stuff out in about 15 minutes. 
Now that's in one thing. Another, another thing that occurs to me, we have to do. And uh, what they're doing, you know, they're just destroying the, the, the country. They're just like a bunch of locusts, you know, going through a grain field. When they get through, there's not, no grain is left. You're you know, I'm, 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 I like to be a little, you know, uh, sort of an inferiority complex, and I like to be on the quiet side, but those are some of the small things. You've done something that, that can be best to be described as incredible here in California. That's right. What I want to know is your, your taxpayers' revolt. Are you going to take that to the other end of the country as well? Or? Well, I'll tell you, really, I, I think this amendment is going to be introduced in, uh, it's already been introduced in Oregon and Arizona. It's in effect in the state of Washington, and the, you know, they, uh, they got a 1% up there, and the Russians haven't attacked Washington yet. See, there's no military thing going on, and the volcano of Molokai hasn't erupted and covered the state. Uh, <laughs> Start, maybe let me just introduce some of the people. He unfortunately is not here. His name is Monte Mason from Encino, and he did most of the work on this uh, over the weekend. Um, we wish to announce today that the Californians for Proposition 13 have filed suit against uh, County Assessor Alexander Pope. The reason we filed suit is that the rollback that he and the Board of Supervisors imposed last week is obviously illegal. It's a political move to try to get the people to vote against Proposition 13. We want the people to know the legality of the move before the election, not after the election. What we fear is going to happen is that uh, unless we challenge the legality of the action, the uh, Board of Supervisors and the Assessor will be forced to put the assessments on the roll after the election, when people will have no opportunity to do anything about it. Uh, we are contending that the uh, action by the county assessor violates the state constitution, the rules and regulations under the uh, revenue and taxation code, and also the uh, appraisal schedule that uh, the county assessor submitted to the state board of equalization, which was approved. The assessment schedule has uh, calls for 700,000 parcels to be reassessed this year. The assessor admits that he has the information available, but what he has done is put this information in the bottom drawer of his desk. That's illegal. If the assessor did that with one piece of property, just hid the information. Uh, if the assessor took one piece of property and, and that he knew the correct value of and put that in the bottom desk drawer, that would be illegal. The fact that he's doing it with 700,000 parcels does not make it legal. It's a political trick on the eve of the election to confuse the voters. Uh, ev almost every assessor in, in the state of California has been asked whether this action is legal, and they all say that it's illegal. Why does the County of Los Angeles, the Board of Supervisors, and uh, Mr. Pope believe that their action is legal? Last year, uh, Philip Watson, who was assessor, tried the same uh, procedure of freezing the assessments. The Board of Supervisors and the County Council at that time ruled that it was illegal. The law has not changed in the last year. We ask why now are they trying to fool the voters of Los, Los Angeles County? Proposition 13 is sweeping the county and is sweeping the state. What we've seen is this last-ditch effort to try to confuse the voters and kill Proposition 13. What's your timetable like now that you've introduced this? Uh, we have uh, uh, Roberta Weintraub this morning served uh, County Assessor Alexander Pope. He's been served with the complaint. We have filed it already. The court may this afternoon have a hearing concerning the issuance of the writ. This is a writ of mandamus to force the assessor to abide by state law. Isn't this gilding the lily? Is it really necessary at this point, as far as 13 is concerned? What we're concerned about is that we come out of Los Angeles County with about a 70 percent vote because certain areas of the state of California have not received the large assessment increases that we have. So we're expecting a, uh, some kind of increase. Any responses from colleagues that are sensitive to this issue? It's 
it's motivated in an effort to try to get a decision made before the election. Uh, we feel that the assessor and the board political should, reasons. Uh, to guarantee the passage of Proposition 13. And California has been considered a <clears throat> California has long been considered a trendsetter, a birthplace for new ideas that eventually sweep the country. California has long been considered a... 